first thing uh, you'll notice uh, when looking at these equations um, is there's nothing in there describing origins so although uh, these equations um, are the best we know descriptions of the phenomena um, all the phenomena that we are aware of in terms of uh, particle uh, interactions uh, including the um, the Higgs field nothing about origins and that's the uh, sort of the purpose of uh, this video is to um, show how what we um, can discover from scientific investigation of our universe um, somehow <clears throat> does not allow us to know uh, the origins. Uh, I want to read from uh, a quote from this guy uh, <coughs> George Simpson, George G. Simpson, uh, the um, Harvard paleontologist, and he says, the origin of the cosmos and the causal principles of its history remains unexplained and inaccessible to science. Here is hidden the first cause sought by theology and philosophy. The first cause is not known, and I suspect it never will be known to living man. We may, if we are so inclined, worship in, in our own ways, but we certainly do not comprehend it. Now, I agree partially with um, his assessment there. However, that's the purpose of special revelation. See, the, the purpose of the Bible and special revelation is to get us beyond that point where science um, simply uh, exhausts its possibilities. Um, and the reason that um, the Bible would be considered in this discussion is because the um, author, the source of the material in the Bible, uh, has Ill, um, demonstrated a supernatural ability to know the future through the prophets and uh, historical events. We can we can conclude, I think, if you're being fair-minded about it, that the uh, source of the information uh, for the biblical prophecies um, is beyond our dimensionality. And I think that's um, what uh, science is up against right now is uh, we are limited dimensionally and um, we are prohibited dimensionally from exploring beyond a certain point. I want to read um, from what the Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans uh, concerning um, this same topic. Um, he says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that, so that man is without excuse. Uh, it's interesting that the apostle was aware of not just <laughs> not just the limitations of um, not just the limitations of uh, science, but also the um, conclusions that we can draw uh, from our position in the universe, and, and that is that there had to be uh, some kind of eternal source. That's what the apostle is talking about now. Um, there's also an infinite um, power that uh, is becoming more and more evident um, as scientists continue to, um, you know, under try to understand uh, what we are observing in the universe uh, in terms of um, things like zero point energy. Uh, and the Higgs field, for that matter, and, and I think that what we're finding, even with 
um, Einstein's gravity, uh, his view of uh, dimensional gravity, is that most of what is responsible for uh, the universe is, is hidden, dimensionally hidden from us. Although we can conclude that there are the there's the inter eternal uh, source background, um, eternal source origins, and then the Bible just comes in and fills us in with the with the details um, that we couldn't otherwise know. So um, the you know scientific investigations mankind has gone through so far. Uh, pretty much eliminates uh, the uh, possibility of, of atheism there's there's no um, way for us for somebody um, to make any kind of such statement that there is is no God I mean that's um, simply uh, un um, well you can't not only can you not um, exhaust the possibilities that there is a God um, but, you know, there's so much that we know that would prohibit um, that statement from, from being considered true, that there is no God. So there was um, an interesting, I had an interesting uh, idea about um, dimensional um, gravity that um, is actually demanding a connection between um, gravity and energy, gravity and matter. Of course, we, we know that that's true, but it's it co coming to be that the background itself is actually um, what's giving matter and energy its, its dimensions, its um, characteristics, actually coming from uh, like a greater background. And, Sort of in a sense that you you know anything you see in a video on a computer is just uh, you know your one-dimensional pixel or your two-dimensional pixel, and um, you have all these uh, things that seem to illustrate uh, a three-dimensional uh, movement, three-dimensional objects, and so forth. Um, but they're all made of, um, in a sense, one. Um, this, you know, one fabric, uh, pixels, basically, in, in this case. Um, the, and I think that's where we're, we're coming to see more and more of this um, holistic view of creation that um, you can't um, separate things uh, in, in, and treat them as if they're, they're totally separate from the source. And that, that's the problem with, you know, with natural, um, natural philosophy is this idea that nature um, somehow um, can exist and there's no need to consider nature's source. Um, that is, I think, the um, folly of the past ages. Um, and, you know, it's, it's coming to... Uh, um, is coming to an end as we realize more and more that the source has to be um, considered for, for things to have um, the um, coherent meaning in terms of understanding reality. I mean, that's what science is supposed to be, you know, an understanding and explanation. Well, the explanations can't really be coherent without uh, reference to uh, the source and, and connect you know, without uh, getting connected to to the source one way or the other. Now, I'm not sure exactly how to go about that um, other than using the Bible. <clears throat> I do want to continue my, my series on scientific foreknowledge in the Bible, and there's a lot more um, to cover in the Bible, uh, the uh, things that demonstrate um, the extra-dimensional reality that we don't experience. Um, directly in our, you know, in our four-dimensional universe.